finale, almost the finale of an episode in the whole basic system. I can't believe how far we have come. 29 episodes. And the comments and the help involved in this has been mind-blowing and greatly appreciated. Right, let's get down to the last bit before we find out the black belt test. So what do we know? Well, we understand how to defend in freeze from the defensive video. And we understand about rotation a little bit due to the 2v2 video. However, I have had some really, really good feedback saying that is it possible to sort of make a graph uh, overhead view of what's going on so i'm gonna do that in this video to make it a little bit more easy to understand i should also just mention last time about how you will sometimes need to rotate ball side in freeze this is also true because the ball can change side so fast or it might just be better for you to rotate ball side it can happen so defensively you gotta think of the circle of life. Yeah, this is like the Lion King. We've gotta have that circle to keep ourselves alive. Here's what you gotta do. You gotta go from being the first man, the guy who's gonna go and challenge the ball and hit the ball and give it a shot. Then you gotta go back around to the back post, the furthest post from the play. This will allow the previous last man to then go to the front post and that becomes the second man. And the other player who was the second man is now the first man challenging the ball. Sometimes, as the third man, you don't just want to go straight to the back post. You may want to start going up the back wall depending on what the offense is doing. If they're firing backboard shots, rotate onto the backboard and make the clear. Unless you see your second man there and then wait on the ground to see if you will need to go back up the backboard after their challenge. And this also, as previously mentioned, gives you the two options. If it goes high, you can expect your second man to take it. If it goes low, they can expect you to take it. And you want to be doing this fast. You're reloading your challenges non-stop to get pressure on the ball. So with this... Hit and quit, baby. Hit and quit. So the general gist, first man challenges ball, second man backs up the first man, third man ready to replace the second man once they challenge as the former first man is coming back to be the third man. <laughs> when you say it like that, it's pretty complex, but hopefully the, uh, the little animation thing helps. The big thing in freeze is spacing. Spacing is paramount. Don't spend too much time next to your teammates. Get into positions they are not in, and that way you cover more areas. Defensively, yes, you will be close when under heavy pressure, as we've just talked about. This is what I like to call the defensive shell, as you are trying to create a shell of protection around your net. But once the game is more midfield or offense-based, then you need space. I always liked Verge's explanation of this, saying that basically every player has a range. If they're going faster, they have more range in front, but less behind. And if they're going slower, they get less in front and they do gain a little bit behind. And the better the player, the more range they're able to cover. If you sort of imagine people having these circles of range around them, then you're less likely to just sit next to your teammate, which could be useful. After you get that breakout challenge, you can look to find the weak side. The weak side is the side opposite to where the action is. And usually what happens is players stack themselves where the ball is and there's loads of space on the opposite side. So what you can do as the first man, if you win the challenge, head over to the opposite side to see if your teammates can get a pass to you. Unless they look like they are going to be overwhelmed, then get back as fast as you can. And to get back, use small boost pathing. This way you can get back faster. Remember in freeze, you can take much more risks offensively because you have the last man to rely on. So in a position near the opponent's net, where in twos you might think about backing off to stay safe, you can push into an angle for a pass around the opponent's net. But this all comes with awareness of your teammates and the game. If in doubt, instantly leave the play. Rotate via a small boost pad lane and then come nice and wide with boost to try and maintain supersonic and give yourself time to react. As previously said, it is basically a position switch. First becomes third, third becomes second and second becomes first. This isn't always true depending on where the ball is moved, but it's a good starting point. If you see yourself closer with better momentum to make the touch, then you can take it. On offense, when pressuring the opponents, do not rotate all the way back to your corner boost. This is how you waste all the hard work. This is the equivalent of writing a book and then setting it on fire because your hands got a bit cold. Why would you do all the hard work just to end it? Stay relevant, grab pads, keep in the play. A good thing with this is if you are in team comms and pressuring offensively, you can leave the mid boost to your previous first man. So as they come round, you can let them know you've left the mid boost for them and they are ready to reload and get in position. Another way to keep momentum is not to turn on the ball. If your nose is pointing away from the ball, meaning you have to turn towards it to hit it or you have to do a backflip, 
Just leave it. You want outward momentum. This is because you will have more force going through the ball, more force going through the 50, and you should be blocking direct shots to goal. And this is why rotation is super important. And of course, the rotation's a little bit different now as things change. Before, it was the same circle defensively in offense, looking for backboard touch and follows. But now we're seeing infield passes being favored in recent times. And teams achieve this differently. But again, using outward pressure to fire a pass across the middle to a teammate who in some cases may already be up is a great way to pressure and bait out the opponent's second man to try and get the third man isolated. So a few good strats for coming up the ranks with a team are to work on big boomers to the opponent's backboard and let the second man attempt the aerial. This is great if the opponents are pressing heavy. Another is if the opponents back off, you can go into the opponent's corner and actually drag the ball out and pass it to your teammate waiting in the middle. Or of course, you can go up the corner and center it to the back post position, which is usually undefended. And of course, as previously stated, Taking the ball up the wall and passing it infield as early as possible to a teammate on the weak side to go up and get a double touch is another awesome option. When rotating offensively, as previously mentioned, once you have made your play, get out of there. Let your other teammates take it. There's no shame in that. It's a team game. What I will say is you want to take small boost pathing unless the opponents are stuck in their net and you're struggling to score as a team. In this case, you can take a wider line out and look for bumps, demos, and to steal their corner boost to keep them pinned in the net. Otherwise, take the boost, the small boost, and path round. In freeze, boost management is vital. And as previously mentioned, of course, the little pad lanes are really important for that. Because you only really need three small boost pads to do most things, or at least to create some sort of block. I've heard many pros mention that in freeze, they want to challenge at the last possible moment safely to use less boost. So learning to time your challenge is huge. Hopefully this helps and the animations are a bit more helpful than before showing how to do the rotations. But remember, Rocket League is very complex. There's very many different ways to do this. You know, I can't give a standard play because there's so many things that can happen with 50s and stuff like that. But just remember to give your team space to keep your momentum and to challenge when it's your time and get out of there when you do so. And you're probably going to have a pretty good time. Well, thank you so much for watching. Next time is the Black Belt Test. I really do appreciate everyone who have been part of this series and giving it a go. It's really cool to see people going up the ranks. I'm um, just, yeah, really, really happy with that. Uh, so thank you very much for watching, everyone. Look after yourselves and peace out. Peace.